uh, my name is Emily Uchuk, in case you didn't know. Um, I thought I would put together a little tutorial video doing uh, a arrangement with the Sweet Pea blend that I put together, explain a little bit why I chose the shades uh, and varieties that I did, and I'm also at the end going to do a quick little Sweet Pea floral crown uh, for your little darling in your life or yourself uh, for to make a little Sweet Pea Fairy uh, party, which is what we did yesterday. And I'll have a blog on that later, um, so I'm going to show you quickly how to make the crown. But right now I'm going to show you how to make an arrangement. And so I'm just going to dive in because why not, that's why we're here. So here's all my sweet peas. So the reason that I chose the colors and the varieties that I did were two reasons. A, I, I chose the really fragrant ones because that is something that I find is so unique to sweet peas. And I feel like it just really ingrains itself in uh, your memory and in the memory of your children. Um, gardening with your kids is something that's really pa um, a passion of mine. So I just, I love the association of sweet peas and their beautiful smell. I have them all around the arbor of my cutting garden and so when you walk through there, especially in the evenings when there's a little bit of a breeze, it just smells incredible. So I chose the more muted varieties because I love to use sweet peas in and amongst other flowers. And so I find that the more traditional sweet peas that you find, like the really, and this is actually even on the more muted side, but uh, traditionally the ones that you see like Roy Wild or you know you can see flower seeds for are very vibrant, which is really fun to have on their own and I love them as well. But for my variety, I really wanted to go with the softer tones so that they can mix really well in arrangements because I do find that if you have the really strong colors, um, it would make for a more contrasted arrangement, which is a great option if that's kind of your style. But for me, I really like colors that are close to each other on the color wheel, so it kind of creates this sense of calm, this kind of beautiful, muted, dreamy, whimsical kind of color. So that's the reason I chose the colors that I did. So I have this really beautiful, soft, uh, like white with a hint of purple at the ends, and then um, they're all very fragrant. So the high scent was one that I chose for that reason. And again, it's just so beautiful, so frilly and lovely, and it's gonna just go so well with our arrangement. So, the other thing I really love about sweet peas, I mean, there's so many things I love about sweet peas, but is they have really strong stalks. So they're really good for floating above arrangements. This one's kind of been wilted, but um, they're really good for sticking in arrangements and they really hold their own so they can really create height to an arrangement. And a lot of flowers, um, just don't have that strength. So like Cosmos, that sort of thing, wouldn't be able to hold their stuff up. So, for, so sweet peas are really, really awesome for that. The other really nice thing, which we will get to when we start doing the crown, is because of these stalks, they're so easy to make crowns with because you can weave them in their stalk with each other. So they're so multi-purpose in terms of creating beautiful things with them. So let's dive in. So this is the bowl that I've chosen. And I got this tip from a florist who actually did a workshop at my greenhouse this summer. And she said to make sure that your bowl is in proportion to your arrangement. So oftentimes we'll reach for a fairly large vase, but we really want the vase to be the smallest part of the whole thing. So this is a vase I just grabbed from the dollar store. It was $1.25. It's very sweet. I think it's a, like a, a little soup bowl or a little uh, dessert bowl or something like that so that's a really good place to check out for that and I just taped it down not very well as you can see um, using duct tape you should use floral tape for this would be more helpful but all I had was duct tape so that's what I used so we'll just get that down into place there so now these are the flowers all from my cutting garden so this will depend when you're watching this video what's in bloom right now but so right now what is in bloom are my dahlias, cosmos, my asters, um, my like filler flowers are kind of starting to fade, but that's okay. We're gonna make we're gonna make it work. And um, I have still, as you can see, my favorite dahlia, which is the cafe ole. And so all, this color, the color palette I'm kind of going for is creamy whites, soft pinks, a little bit of raspberry tones, and then a little bit of a raspberry pop with this incredible incredibly cute little dahlia. So, usually my last arrangement, oh, this is completely cut out. Hang on a second, let me just over pour the water. So my last arrangement I used 
foxglove to give myself like a really strong arching um, kind of branching, but my foxgloves are done. It is August when I'm recording this video, so foxgloves are typically done by now. Mine definitely are. So that is not an option for me. So I'm gonna try to create the same feel with some other of these little guys. Here we go. So again, floral tape would be preferable. We're gonna hide the, the show of this after. So our tape, I've used chicken wire. I've crunched it all up and I've pushed it down into the bowl and then I'm taping it in place, trying to tape it in place with some duct tape. This is, I'm doing this live guys. I'm not gonna re-record because we're just gonna go here. So again, for a while, which is probably better than this, but all I have is duct tape and clippers, so that's what we're gonna use. So you really wanna make sure your chicken wire is in place securely. So the whole arrangement doesn't come popping out. So like I said, I've taken some chicken wire, I crunch it up, I push it down the bowl, and then typically you tape all the way around and then across with flower wire, or flower tape rather. So, I don't have flower tape right now, or I totally do, I just can't find it. And I wanted to just record this while my kids are playing happily, because that is real life. <laughs> so I'm just going to start with my higher kind of fill pieces. So for me, I don't use a lot of green in my arrangements. I know that's the more typical thing to do is to kind of green up your area, but I don't know. I just don't care for a lot of green. I like just all flowers. So that's what I'm going to do because it's my arrangement. So it's my rules, right? This is why I don't do this for other people. Well, I do for friends and stuff, but anyway. So here is, this is one of my favorite fillers. And I can't remember the name of it, so I'll find the name of it and add it to my video link or the description of what I'm using at the end because I can't quite remember what this one's called, but I love it. It is such a fun filler. It really is just, and it adds these cute little like pinky flowers. And they're so fun. I use it all the time in my arrangements to just add a little bit of height and texture. The other good thing is just to walk around your yard and just, and or like, your neighborhood and find what are considered weeds, but there's some really pretty weeds. There's that white kind of fluffy one that I've seen all over and I use that in an arrangement. So weeds don't always have to be like weeds. Oh gosh. Let's get you down in there. We're gonna hide this duct tape. Should we just pull off this duct tape? She's not doing anything. There we go. The chicken wire seems to be holding well, but you really should take it. But for the sake of not making you guys wait while I go and dry out the bowl, retake the bowl, we'll just power on through. I'll do you right there. Okay. Then we will use some of our big guys. So I, I want this to look really good from all angles. Usually I have like a front and a back, but I kind of want this to really look good from all angles. And I also want it to be like have layers. So have some deep in the bowl, some coming out of the bowl. And that's where the sweet peas come in because sweet peas are so, they're my last step. And they're kind of as the florist that I learned from, she calls them dancing flowers. And so you put them at the end and they kind of just dance over top of your arrangement. And I love sweet peas for that. So these are asters, and I got one in a really, really pretty, there it is, raspberry tone. Look at that flower. Oh, it's so beautiful. I am going to trim off the leafies here, because they're a little bit loud. Take away from the punch of the raspberry. So I'm just gonna trim this down. Go. And I have a lot 
dahlias right now, so that's why I'm using a lot of dahlias in this arrangement. And this is going to be one of the ones that I put like really close to the bowl because he's kind of a puffy, puffy one, so I want him to stay close. So this is another one of my favorite filler flowers. Unfortunately, mine are kind of at the end of their lifespan. As you can see, there's a lot that are browning up. But they are so happy and sweet. And this is called uh, Fever Few, I think, Ven Venmo, Venmo uh, Snowball. Again, I apologize if I'm getting this all wrong. I will add the types uh, in my description. I'll do a blog and I'll do it there. So this is the, so cute. It's like little popcorn pops. I just love them. I think it adds so much to an arrangement. Always add them if I can. Like I said, it was slim pickings out there for my, I just went out and just tried to do another little quick peek to see if I miss them. And they're all looking a little bit sad, so I just took what I could get. Okay. And then I'm going to add, oh, I need to get my big guy in before we do too much. So this is the grand kind of piece of all this. And this is the Cafe Olay. She is, Absolutely stunning. Put her off to the side here. So the nice thing about the chicken wire is that it has multiple kind of areas that she's going to grab onto. So it's it's really helpful if you can get it to thread to, through two places. There we go. And then that will keep it from collapsing or like falling over. So I'm just going to rearrange a few things now around her because she's taking up more space. And I plan, and that's okay. She's also covering the duct tape on that side, which is very helpful. There we go. And then I'm going to use this beautiful dahlia. Look how gorgeous the tones are in this. To bring some balance over to this side. And then I also love this for filler. So sweet, again, it's late in the season. The temperatures are starting to drop, things are starting to, you know, head towards fall and that's okay. But I am desperately hanging on to summer here. And that's a good, that's another uh, thing to, to note too when you're re watching these videos. Sweet peas, if taken care of well, can really give you months of blooms, which I love. So they, my sweet peas started in my back garden with the vegetables because I had two different varieties in the spring, and now it's like the end of August and they're still going, which is so amazing. Not a lot of flowers do that. So sweet peas are one to plant for so many reasons, but also just longevity. They're so giving in their uh, bloom time. So these are, these are part of sweet peas too, and these are ones they've gone to pee. Now you wouldn't eat this, but I just think they're so sweet, and I'm going to add them just as a little, you know, some height, some fun texture. It just adds like a little bit of fun to the arrangement too, and I'll have him come coming out the side because I think he's sweet with his little his little peas. Oh, I dropped something. Okay, so now we have the middle here. Do we want to use another dahlia? These little raspberry ones are just adorable. They were hidden kind of underneath. I think I planted my dahlias a little too close to each other. So that one was kind of like underneath another plant. I was like, oh, hi there, friend. What are you doing there? So I need one more kind of in the center. Um, can you just do a little cluster of cosmos? You really want to make sure to clean off all of your stem, and I typically do this out as I'm cutting. I'll grab, as you can see, all this, the foliage is here. I'll cut, and then I'll strip right into right in the field or the, the garden patch, wherever I am. Uh, it just makes it easier than, and that way, if they're sitting in the the vase with the water, they're not filling it with foliage because that is what shortens your vase life so much is to keep the foliage out of the water. You want to have no foliage in the water. So we put you come out of it. And then we're gonna add our sweet peas. 
Okay, so that's kind of giving me like a mound. So I'm gonna kind of go in, like I said, I wanted to have this a few different layers. So I'm going to start tucking things, more of the little guys. Look how sweet that little friend is. With him kind of poking out. This one is a lot more vibrant than I would typically use, but he's fine, so I'll just put him in there. Now let's kind of fill the space. Anyways, beautiful, loving this. You in their water so you're not. Again, I'm gonna use this little pea pod because I just think they're so sweet. Okay, now that's looking good. A oh, little bug happened to pop out here and say hello. So now we're gonna use my favorite little sweet peas to kind of give this whole thing a little bit more pizzazz, a little bit more height and more of a kind of dynamic feel. So, like I mentioned, this is why I love the neutrals, because they just go with everything. It doesn't matter what tones you were using in this arrangement, the Sweet Peas would, this variety that I, I picked for the U Greenhouse blend is meant to just be your best friend with every arrangement that you want. It's just gonna add this fluffy whimsicalness to whatever colors you're using. They don't need to be the star of the show. They're just gonna be there to bring everybody else's best sides out. That is like the best friend you can ask for, right? Sweet peas are the best friend of the flower world. I'm gonna quote that, that's gonna be my quote. Get that on a t-shirt. Okay, you can go. See, now you're getting hidden down in there. He'll pull you out. There we go. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Where should I put you? You can go over here. There we go. Love it. Pull him down just a touch. And pull him out because he is very sweet, but he's getting kind of hidden. Hi. This giant aster. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, so as you can see, I'm gonna move some space here so you can actually see what's going on here. This is a very cool range. I'm going to go step back and take a look at it here. The cafe au lait is just dominating that side. That's okay. And again, just get some that are like really high, just to really give this so much different. So this, I think, is fun from all angles. The sweet peas are coming out at you. If you look closer, you're going to see all the little details of the little filler flowers, the cosmos, the aster tucked in there, the little stalk. Oh, there is an earwig. We'll leave him be for now until I can get a... Okay. Yes, hello, Mr. Earwig. That is the downside of Dahlia's, is they always have earwigs. Let's get him out of here. Where is my I'll have to deal with him later. Anyways, hopefully he's not gonna do too much. Come around, little friend. No, you're not a little friend, you were nasty. Get out of my flowers. Where'd you go? He ran away. Okay, anyways, we'll, we'll find him later. Okay, so this is what we have so far with an earwig in it. So don't put it on your dinner table quite yet. But look how pretty that is. I may use one of the pink ones. And I love that you can strip off and just have this one all by itself, just really, really coming up high to give some fun height to this arrangement. Oh, he's a little bit sad. A little bit, so we use. Okay, there we go. Like how fun are they? I just love them. They're so tissuey and pillowy soft, and they're just so lovely. So there we go. And it's nice because this didn't require a lot of flowers. This was maybe less than 10 stems, so even if you are 
buy in if you don't have all of this variety. If you're just growing sweet peas or you're just growing this or this or this, you can just pick up a few stems from your florist, your local florist or your local flower farm or whatever and create this beautiful centerpiece for your dining room table or your nightstand or your kitchen island or wherever you like to put your flowers, make a few, um, put it as a centerpiece in your girl's sweet pea tea party, which I did yesterday and I'll be sharing some photos from that, which is really fun. I actually just lined the table with a bunch of these beautiful glassware that I just grabbed at a thrift shop. Um, and I put sweet peas all in them and line them down the table, which is another really great way to use your sweet peas. So yeah, hope you guys like this arrangement. If you have any questions, of course, reach out to me. I'm always here. I'm gonna go see if I can get this earwig out of my flower.